Hear that? That's the sound of you creating your own destiny. While others are waiting in line for brunch, you're spending Saturday in the garage. Because you went to AdvanceAutoParts.com, ordered a platinum battery with a three-year replacement warranty, and picked it up in-store just 30 minutes later. Now, installing a battery isn't an all-day job, but what the brunch crowd doesn't know won't hurt it. Advance Auto Parts. Let's get you back to the garage. Visit AdvanceAutoParts.com to learn more. The following program is a Podcast One.com production. He started in a small town in Texas. Worked his ass off to become one of the most famous wrestlers of all time. We're going to take care of business tonight, and that's the bottom line. And now he's dominating the world of on-demand audio. And he's doing it for the working man. This is a damn good outlet for me to spew the bullshit off my brain. This is the Steve Austin Show. Unleashed. 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 All right, everybody, welcome to the Steve Austin Show. I am coming to you from the main streets of Los Angeles, California. Sitting here comfortably in my office with Hershey the Wonder Dog at my side. Hey, I got my arm in a sling. Uh, doing real well. The recovery process is going good ever since I had this damn shoulder fixed. And now we're going on, I'm at a week away from my surgery date, a week out. And I haven't touched a single damn weight because that's been my doctor's instructions. Man, I tell you what, I'm starting to look like a piece of trash. Left arm's atrophying up. This right arm, my my right bicep, hell, it's probably about 19 inches right now because there's still a lot of blood and a lot of the flow from that shoulder going down there. A lot of discoloration. It's purple, red, yellow, and brown. So there's a kaleidoscope of colors just from the bruising and all the stuff that's kind of floated down into that general vicinity. It's a pain in the ass Try to take a shower. I'll tell you my shower story here in the podcast in a minute. It's not too crass. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's just trying to cope with dealing with this thing and trying to be gentle with this arm when you take it out of a sling and try to take a damn shower every couple of days. Maintain a little bit of personal hygiene. But everything's going well here at the house, here at 316 Gimmick Street. I called up old Teddy, and we had a hell of a conversation. I believe uh, you're going to dig his podcast. You're probably going to end up laughing your ass off. It was finally good to cut loose on a little bit lighter subject matter after the last podcast we did. And we just let it flow and let it hang out, and that's all we're going to do. I think you will dig today's show. If it don't put a smile on your face, I don't know what will. And if it don't make you laugh out loud or spit something out of your mouth, there might be something wrong with you. And, folks, before I get much further, Broken Skull Challenge is coming down to the last two episodes of the season. This Sunday night, CMT, 8-7 Central. It's the season finale. The guys and the gals, this season will be over. It's the season finale, Broken Skull Challenge, on CMT this Sunday. If you can't watch it live, set your DVRs and don't miss a season finale of Steve Austin's Broken Skull Challenge on CMT because I will describe the finish in four letters. E-P-I-C. Epic. Do not miss it. But anyway, let me take care of a little business here. And that business is uh, about the podcast premium service because I've been getting a lot of questions, uh, emails, and stuff directed to me on my Twitter account and at questions at steveaustinshow.com. And if you ever have any questions, comments, or suggestions, uh, people that you'd like for me to interview, please send those in. I've had a lot of very good suggestions lately. I'm going to try to take uh, you people up on that. But uh, going back to the podcast one premium deal, that's a paywall, and basically, you've got to join up to get the older episodes of the Steve Austin Show, Family Friendly or Unleashed. Same thing with the Jericho Show, the the Ross Report. There's over 10,000 archives in the premium service. Now, I'll be straight up honest with you. I wasn't happy about going behind the paywall with my past episodes, but that's a podcast one decision, which I have nothing to do with. And so here's what the deal is. It works out to about 14 cents per day. And if you sign up for two years, you get a $50 gift card. So, you know, for 14 cents a day, you get to sign up and you get all the backlogged editions of all the shows that are on the entire podcast one.com platform. Now, that's a great bargain if you listen to that many podcasts. So it is what it is. Uh, 
Again, I wasn't real happy about it, but it works out to about 14 cents per day. And if you sign up for two years, you get a $50 gift card because I had a lot of people saying, hey, Steve, where are your older episodes? I thought you did this for the working man and the working woman. Well, I do. But those are corporate decisions that I cannot control. So that's what it is. And if you want to join, you can join now at podcastone.com slash premium. And that's the bottom line on what has happened with the free podcast. There'll always be, what, I guess 20 of the uh, family-friendly, 20 of the Unleashed shows, give or take that number. Uh, and you can get hooked on the show. And if you want to listen to those other ones, uh, then you'll have to sign up for the premium service. But, hey, man. Uh, I'd appreciate if you just spread the word and just keep listening to the free shows because if you jump on now, you don't have to miss it. Well, I mean, hell, I've done over 325 shows, I guess, by now. So you're going to miss out on a lot of them unless you want to pay for them. But I don't blame you if you don't want to pay for them. These days, the economy ain't getting no better. And with the presidential race uh, coming up right in front of us, with the way these candidates are acting, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen to the damn uh, economy. So listen to the podcast. Sign on for free. And I appreciate that very much. I appreciate you guys spreading the word on this podcast. But, hey, man, before we get into the body of this podcast, i got to take care of one of the sponsors of this show. The guy happens to be a real good friend of mine. His name is Diamond Dallas Page, and his product is DDP Yoga. And, folks, if you're looking to change your life and get on the path to healthier living, then get yourself on the DDP Yoga program. And right now, Dallas is giving all you guys a great deal. If you go to ddpyoga.com slash Austin, you get the best price on DDP Yoga, and you get three free months of the DDP Yoga Now app. It is available for iPhones and Android, and both versions are getting great reviews. This app is off the charts, and Dallas has thought of everything. You can do live workouts from the DDP Yoga Performance Center. You can access recipes, cooking demonstrations, and nutrition guides, and you can do it all from your phone. And he's got rewards programs built into the app, too. You get points for the yoga you do, and then you can redeem those points for special rewards and DDP merchandise. Dallas has given you everything you need to get on a path to health you're living, and he's making it as easy as possible. So get the DDP Yoga program at ddpyoga.com slash Austin and take advantage of the three free months of the DDP Yoga Now app. Like Dallas always says, all you got to do is commit. So make that commitment now at ddpyoga.com slash Austin. Steve Austin, Unleashed. Unleashed. All right, Jack, one, two, go ahead, Teddy. Yes, sir. I sit here in Rockport, Texas, in my bedroom, affectionately known as the Boom Boom Room. Down God here damn, that might be too much information. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's supposed to be a fucking sound check and I'm hearing about the boom boom room. God damn. So what's been going on in the boom boom room, Teddy? Oh fuck. The mysterious blue panties, that's the story I gotta hit you with. Oh shit. Well hey, wait, everybody welcome to the podcast, man. This is a this is a phone call. Uh myself, I'm here in uh, Marina Del Rey, California. I got uh Teddy on the Skype, he's on his cell phone. Before we get to the blue panty story, I told Teddy, I said, Hey man, I said I need some help with a goddamn podcast. I got my arm, you know, still in a sling and hard to get around. I'm not really clear to drive and I uh, didn't have any guests lined up. So I said, hey, man, let's uh, just shoot the shit, and uh, that way I can tell my MRI stories. I got a laugh track, and Teddy's got any stories, I'll be the laugh track. And so it's easier to have somebody on the other end of the line when you're telling a goddamn story rather than me just fiddle-fucking by myself right here with a goddamn microphone in front of me. So anyway, but first things first, Teddy, uh, welcome to the Shizzo. Happy 50th birthday, you old crustacean motherfucker. <laughs> God damn it, if I'd have known I was going to make it this long, I would have paced myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I appreciate it, man. I feel I feel top of the world, man. It's good. Did Real you good do anything happy. special for your birthday, Teddy? No, you know what? I went out to dinner with uh, my buddy that I always go fishing with. Uh, he and his wife took me out to dinner. Uh, went to Portland and had a real good, real good ribeye, actually. Real good steak. Uh, no, but I mean, I, I got up and went to work and, you know, did what I always do. And then went out, had a nice meal, came home, had a couple of cocktails and hit the rack. Dude, that ain't where the blue panties come in. Y'all didn't do a menage a trois in the boom boom room, did you? No, 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 man. The easy, blue panties were. Easy, easy. <laughs> okay, let, let me get you loosened up a little bit. I know you're drinking Jack and Coke over there. I'll ask you that question in a minute. God damn it, Teddy. Right. Here's a story. The setup over here is I was going to uh, call this damn podcast Cold Beer Conversation after the George Strait song. 
If you hadn't heard it, you need to listen to it. Anyway, I went over down to the liquor store and walked in there with my damn sling in. I drove over there. Man, I got a damn 911 store my, my wife got into. She's fine. Uh, it was about her mom. Hell, I ain't even supposed to be driving. But, you know, when shit happens, Teddy, goddamn, you, you do what you got to do. So when, when, no, God, when, you gotta, when you have to drive to the liquor store rather than walk, you drive to the liquor store rather than walk. <laughs> Call me a little bit lazy. And some is only half a mile away. So anyway, I go over there, and I'm looking in the damn cooler, and I'm in the IPA section because that's what I drink. And what? I'll be goddamned if there ain't one single Broken Skull IPA up in that motherfucker. And I looked up at the dude, and I said, hey, man. I said, where's the Broken Skull? He goes, we're out. Man, he got on the hotline. I guess he's calling Rob over to Segundo. I said, easy, man. Put the damn <laughs> phone down. I said, he go just rustle over a six-pack for the kid right now. <laughs> I said, fuck, fuck it. Uh, I'll get the Broken Skull IPA when I go down to the brewer this weekend. I'll just take a fifth of Patron. I got some margarita mix in at the house. I got my Yeti cooler fired up, Teddy. I'm drinking a Broken Skull margarita. You know how I make them. They hot. Oh, yeah. A lot of ice, yep. salt on the rim, and we're rocking and rolling. So, But I got headaches, hassles, and horse shit over here. You know, one of the things about my shoulder surgery, Teddy, since I went in, and uh, I sent you a picture of the damn thing. I'm going to put a picture out on my Twitter account, Steve Austin BSR, probably eh, next week when I go in to get the stitches taken out. I don't want to send a damn picture out. It's kind of gory looking. But I got them right. five holes in my shoulder, and I keep those some bitches covered up with uh, waterproof band-aids because when I take a shower. But here's the thing, dude. When you're just hanging around, you, you when you get this shoulder surgery, you don't take a shower every day. So I take a shower like every two or three days. And the first one, Kristen had to help me on because that damn wing was so tender. So anyway, she was over taking care of her mom, and I'll get in that story in a little bit. So I get in a damn shower. I got my Pandora radio on my iPhone laying on the counter. And I got a hand towel, you know, like the medium-sized towel that you dry your hands off with. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm using. I squirt the damn soap on there. I got that soap in a bottle, that Gillette, whatever kind of shit I use in the shower. And I'm using that towel. I'm keeping my arm. I ain't got my sling on. I just keep it kind of held up, like it in a position that it's in a sling. And I use that towel to just kind of flop it on, hit myself in the back, <laughs> you know, you know, wash my <laughs> legs, shit like that. Dude, taking a damn one arm shower is is well because you know if I if I turn that arm the wrong way, boy, that motherfucker light up and say, "Not now, not so fast, my friend." <laughs> so I'm in there whipping that towel. I got a bunch of crust on my ass. So finally, I get all cleaned up. I dry off, I get uh, halfway dressed, and uh, man, putting all I wear is sleeveless dry fit shirts, Teddy, right now. And when my wife is here, she can help me put one on. We we put that damaged wing through the hole first. Then my head goes through the middle hole, and then we'll stick that other one, and she'll pull that shirt down for me. Well, you know, me being Mr. Independent, you know, fuck, you got to do shit on your own, right? Right, right, So right. anyway, I'm in there. I, I get the goddamn shirt on, bottom line. And so then I want to take those wet Band-Aids off to let my stitches, if there was any water that was in there to get the stitches wet, I'm going to take those Band-Aids off so I can fresh them up. Uh, when Christian gets home and redo them. So sure. I start pulling. I got five holes in my shoulder. I can reach four of the holes. That <laughs> hole back here on my rear delt where they fixed the infraspinatus and supraspinatus, I couldn't reach that goddamn Band-Aid. And it was driving me crazy because I can't, you know how flexible I am. I ain't flexible for shit. And I can't reach across here. <laughs> and I can't scrunch my shoulder up to grab a some bitch. And I'm thinking, well, you know, could wait till Kristen gets home so she could help her brother out, pull the Band-Aid off so the son bitch can dry out and put a new Band-Aid on. But no, no, no. You know, I'm in the independent mode, so i got to pull that Band-Aid off. So I get to thinking, you know, if I just got something that's kind of an extension, I can peel that thing off of there. So laying right here in front of me, Teddy, and I got one in my damn uh, arm sling right here. I got a broken skull, cold steel knife, and I opened that son of a bitch up, and it was like I was... <laughs> <laughs> hey kids, don't try this at home. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm a year older than Teddy, and, and, and probably not any goddamn smarter. But uh, so I figure, you know, this is a badass, sharp ass knife. So I figure I'll reach this knife back here. I'm looking in the mirror, and I'll just lift up that edge, and then I'll start just easing that band aid off with a goddamn broken skull knife. From Cold Steel Maps. Here's a cheap plug. Uh, Swigging margarita. So 
I got that thing about halfway flayed off here, Teddy. But then I'm starting to reach the part where it turns into the bandit band aid part, uh, or the right. the uh, gauze part, or the whatever it is. But so we're at the point I'm at right now. I'm thinking, okay, with well, a knife, you know, I'm poking it into the actual part of the adhesive strip. But now because the knife is so sharp and that point is so sharp, I'm tearing up the band aid. So in my infinite wisdom and with all my surgical procedure skills and my knowledge and background of anatomy, physiology, and kinesiology of the human body through four and a half years of college education, of which I quit with 17 hours to graduate, I figure, hey, a set of tongs that you flip a steak on a grill with would be easy to grab that edge and pull that motherfucker off. <laughs> so, my dumb country ass, I go into the kitchen, I get my goddamn uh, tongs, and I go in there, and sure enough, uh, my thoughts were confirmed with success. I grab that son bitch and edge of that band aid with them tongs, and because that tongue is about 12, 12 inches long, pull that right. damn band aid off, and Teddy, it was a success story. I'm sitting here in front of a Blue Yeti microphone. I got my new goddamn computer going, and I'm having a Skype conversation with you. And I don't want to sit here and brag about my surgical skills. I would rather poke fun at you and make fun of your technology skills. I told Teddy. <laughs> and I'm going to let Teddy Here we go. <laughs> now, I'm not going to just throw you under the bus. I'm going to let you try oh, to defend yeah. yourself. But <laughs> I think you deserve to be run over by the bus. No, ain't no defense for this shit, man. I couldn't figure it out. Okay, yeah. so what I do, I call Teddy up. I said, hey, man, I said, I want to do a podcast for Thursday, and I just want to shoot the shit and have fun. Uh, the last the last podcast was kind of hard with, with all the people that died, and the mood was kind of down. I just kind of did a QA. and a I said, man, let's just kick it like we was kicking it at the ranch. I, so I said, hey, man, um, do you have Skype? And, of course, you know, this motherfucker's got all the applications, POF, all the shit Teddy's into, but he ain't got no Skype on his computer. So I said, there's any way you can install it. And I said, because that would give us the premium sound quality that an award-winning podcast that has never won an award strives for. And you take it from here, Teddy. What the fuck happened? Because I'm talking to you on your iPhone. Dude, if you'd ask me, have you got something... I mean, have you got the ability to hook us up with they're not us? You know, with, with some out of town, out of town fun. Yeah, I ain't got no pink panties or blue panties, whatever the fuck they were. <laughs> now, did anything of that lookingforlove.com? Got it. You know, yeah, one night stand.com? Got it. You know, all of that shit. You know, strangers in the night? Got it. <laughs> Skype? What the fuck is this? Skype, dude. I mean, like, it's like we're going to have a conversation. You know, yeah, I had no idea what that thing was. So I got home this afternoon, and I sat down at my old trusty computer, and I typed in Skype. And about 372,000 things cropped up for Skype. You know, and I did it on so computer literate, I don't realize that, you know, the first half a dozen are ads. You know, you got to filter. you got to roll down through those until you get down to the real meat of the deal. Well, I clicked on the third one that said download Skype for free. I said, dude, I'm down with that. <laughs> clicked on it. It said, uh, you know, for twenty four ninety five you can, you know, do this thing. I'm like, well, all right, I'm at twenty five bucks to be on the podcast. What the hell? Boop. Give them a credit card and they run, you know, they're downloading and all this shit and it says 20, 22 drivers on your computer are, are, are down. They're not functioning properly, so we can't download this app. And I'm going, well, fuck, that's because all the porn I look at. You know, so that, that, that makes sense. You know, shit, I'm surprised only 22. You I'm know? surprised yeah. you can <laughs> see the fucking screen. <laughs> been a slow month, you know? Yeah, it's only 22. Holy yeah. shit. So, <laughs> So I'm like, all right. This is the oh, Unleashed oh. Unleashed podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, all right, man, I'll bite. You know, so so where do we go from here? Well, you know, you can, and, and you know, I'm reading this. Just click on this. Boom, click on it. And then the next thing you know, you can either activate it online or you can call the, you know, 1877 number, which should have been a tip-off because that's the lead into a lot of, you know, those porn sites. 
that are, you know, where you, where you talk to them chicks live, quote unquote. Prank uh, caller, prank caller. You call yeah. on the cell phone. <laughs> So what yeah, happened? So I'm like, yeah, I'm going, dude. I can't, I can't muddle my way through this. I need some, I need some professional help. So I call. Uh, dude, you need a lot of professional help, not just in the computer department. <laughs> yeah, please continue. <laughs> yeah, no, that relates to the couch. Yeah, no. <laughs> not this. yeah. So the girl, you know, she gets on, and you know, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you, if you click on all of this stuff, I can have access to your computer from oh, you no. know. Yeah, where whatever oversee island I'm at, <laughs> and I'm like, it all right. I mean, what the fuck, Come man? On. And I got, dude, I got some shit on my computer that you know, yeah, that it, it would make Charles Manson blush. It's like, <laughs> holy shit! I'm like, hey, fuck it, man. Whatever. Here we go. God I'm damn gonna, it, Daddy. Dude, I told you, have Kristen call me because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, and you know. I never heard from her, so I took, took the ball and ran. And this lady, you know, gets on the screen and starts, and it's basically a scam. And, you know, just my my <laughs> unprofessional opinion as far as computers go. But anyway, she's like poking and prodding on the computer terminal. And I can see it on the screen where she's moving the cursor right. around, clicking on all my shit, and I'm like, Oh, I hope that motherfucker doesn't go to Picasso, you know, with all them pictures. Like, boy, this is going to get embarrassing. <laughs> <Damn it. Yeah. laughs> you know. <laughs> so when did you throw in the towel and say, hey, man, this just ain't going to happen. I'll, I'll talk to Steve on the phone. Dude, when they hit me up for 250 bucks, because they were like, Hey man, your computer's running slow, and I said, "Well, no oh. shit." And I live, out, I live out in the fucking country. You know, I'm getting Wi-Fi. Motherfucker on dial-up. Yeah, no, 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 dude, I'm not on dial-up, but my goddamn Wi-Fi gimmick is up in the fucking tree. You know, that's that they they put that piece of PVC with the antenna up on that fucking oak tree. So when the wind blows. That some bitch is whipping around, you know, like a dog's tail. It's like, well, fuck it. No wonder my, my internet is slow. <laughs> you know, they're like, well, you know, for two hundred and forty nine ninety nine, we can put you in touch with a, a, a software technician. And I'm like, ah, uh, you know what, man? I okay, this doesn't sound right. I said, hey, I got a I got a computer guy that's local here. That every time I lock up my computer. Because I get on some porn site and it and it you know pinches me out, he comes over and for you know sixty bucks, he unfreezes my computer and down the road we go. I said, hey, before I you know give you guys two hundred and fifty bucks to get me this Skype oh, deal, Jesus. I want to yeah I want to talk to Chuck, make sure we're on board. Well, this guy then he starts hard selling me, man, and and that's when you know right you know it, it's it's kind of a scam. And I said, hey, dude, you know what? We have that money back guarantee, and I'd like to have my money back if you wouldn't mind. You know, and I think I think I'm you know I think I'm thirty bucks out. You know, but it's it's cool. So, needless to say, I don't have Skype. You know, and I'll I'll get Chuck over here. You know, and and get him to set it up. Dude, I've been you in know, your house like once or twice or three times. I can't remember, but and I leave I didn't leave behind no blue panties. Uh, now, what kind of computer system are you running? Some kind of fucking 1996 uh, Windows no, shit or God what? No, dude. I mean, well, no, it's a Windows Vista seven or eight or something like that. No, dude, you got to realize, man. I'm I'm like on the outskirts of town, so high speed internet. It doesn't. They don't savvy that that high speed internet shit. Did you try to watch? Try to watch a porn video where they're buffering every five seconds. You know, it's like, dude, really? God damn, really? I get hot about it. No, dude, it's it's unnerving. Uh, but that buffering no. thing will really kill a moment. <laughs> <laughs> that so goes living in the country. So goes, you know, I, I I but I dig living out in the country. It's you know, I'm I'm about to switch to eight millimeter. You know, so I can see that <laughs> real time. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, 
call his grandpa, see if he's got any old reel to reel shit I can hey, borrow. You dude, know? I can't fucking ch- uh, bust your chops too much on the goddamn computer stuff because. Man, the other day in bed, I told this story on the other podcast. It's straight up, shoot, <clears throat> straight as an arrow. I get in bed, got a glass of wine, set it beside me, kind of crooked up on my leg in a pillow. I make a wrong move. I dump about four to five ounces of red wine all down my computer. <laughs> I'm glad I can reach out of that store so I can do some fucking justice. God damn it. <laughs> I got a bad wing. I jump out of bed, literally split like an Olympic sprinter. I turn that bitch upside down and start patting it on the back like I'm trying to burp a baby, trying to get all that wine off of those electronic modules in there. Because I know I'm fucked because I got a podcast to turn in. And it was basically a brand new computer. I bought the motherfucker about a year ago. And, of course, I didn't get the Apple protection plan. I got a Mac uh, laptop computer. And this is how I send my shows to Stacy. And I, I ain't even got a show done, and now I got to worry about replacing my entire fucking computer because I just dumped a bunch of wine in it. So anyway, let me guess, you're making a drink. Sorry, dude. Yeah. God damn it. There ain't no way. There ain't no way this podcast is ever going to win a goddamn award. I'm trying to tell a goddamn heart-wrenching story about a man breaking his computer and you mixing a Jack and Coke while I'm telling the story. You try to steal my realize, thunder. I didn't realize. I didn't realize that door would squeak like that. I got to get a little WD forty on that refrigerator <laughs> door. Hello. So, dude, I turn that fucking no swig a swig a jack. I turn that mm-hmm. goddamn computer over. I start patting that motherfucker. I say, okay, come on, baby, come on back to life, baby. You'll be okay. I take it in the kitchen. I wipe that motherfucker down. All lickety split. You never know that there's a bunch of wine inside of it. And then uh, I, I left it laying upside down. And uh, I poured myself another glass of wine to soothe my nerves and decided to go to sleep. <laughs> it's a straight shoot. So I wake up the next morning and I go in there and it's a come to Jesus meeting. This is where I, you know, see if I was able to save my computer before all the wine hit those electronic modules. And uh, I turn that so much over and I hit the power button. And I hit the power button again, and I hit a couple other buttons, you know, because sometimes those computers go to sleep. I right. started shaking that motherfucker, wake up, wake up. I plugged it in. I figured maybe it was out of power. And not a goddamn thing, Teddy. That computer was deader than a fucking doornail. So I said, well, this is great. Now, I, I, I figured I was going to have to buy another goddamn computer that night, but, you know, I wasn't going to stress about it because it was time to go to sleep. So anyway, I lost my computer, and here's the thing, Teddy. This damn Mac laptop computer, because I take so much pride in my show, and computers are high, the motherfucking computer costs $2,000. So, man, that was a $2,000 mistake when I fucking wine spilled on a computer, and now I got to go spend another $2,000 in the space of a year. So now I'm out 4Gs, plus... On this one, I got the Apple protection plan. By the time I rolled out of the Mac store, and I had to drive myself to the store, I got to get to that. Anyway, Teddy, long story short, that little incident cost me, basically, my wife rounded off to $5,000 because she's the one that does all the figuring around here. So it was a hell of a goddamn mistake that I, I won't make again. And what I need to do, I just need to get one of those goddamn rubber things that you put over the, t- well, I need to not uh, have any liquids near my computer when I'm looking at it. Uh, but anyway, so it was, it was a costly lesson, Teddy. And uh, here's the thing. I get up, and uh, my wife goes to the gym that day. Computer's fucked. And she, uh, dude, I'm not cleared to drive. I'm only, well, now as we speak, I'm six days out of surgery. And so she's going to go do her workout. She works out at 10 on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, same schedule. And she said, I'll stop by the Mac store, and I'll get your computer, and I'll bring it to you. You can do your podcast. You sit there and go through your emails, uh, pick out your Q&As. And uh, you'll be ready to roll. Uh, Dan Brady will come by, my tech, my tech guy, like your, like your guy. He can right. install all the stuff on it. Man, we got a game plan. We're solid. Right. So my wife goes to the, Kristen goes to the gym, and uh, this goes back to why she couldn't call you and help you download the Skype. Well, hell, man, uh, her mother calls her and she ain't feeling so uh, great over in, uh, you know, she lives about fifty miles from us. And Kristen says, "Mom, I'm calling nine one one." So, man, I'm sitting here at the house just waiting for my wife to get home, waiting for her to go to Apple Store. And she comes in, and she goes, I just called 911 for my mom. I said, I'm going to Thousand Oaks. I said, well, fuck. I said, I'll go with you. 
because you know we got to help out. Yeah. And she yeah, goes, no, yeah. no, no. She goes, no. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take care of it. You do your thing. Go to the computer and uh, see if uh, I was going to get my neighbor to take me to the uh, Mac store because I'm not cleared to drive. So anyway, boy, she comes in, grabs a bottle of water, and hauls ass out to take care of her mother. Now let me fast forward a little bit. Everything turned out fine with my mother-in-law. Uh, she was in the hospital, I think overnight, but everything checked out, and she's comfortable and at home, and has someone with her right now, so she's she's fine. But it was a legit nine one one call, so that took Kristen out of the game plan as far as calling you to help you with the Skype, and took her out of the game plan to help me go get a computer. So man, I I I'd load up in that Ford Bronco, go down there and get my computer, and I got to give a shout out here. Got to give a shout out to Dan Brady who came over and installed the FileZilla stuff and all this other bullshit. And last time he came over to, to fix up my other computer, which I ruined, was uh, he gave me this, he told me to go buy a thing to back up my computer. And he goes, Steve, you got to back your computer up so you retain all the information. So I just got this thing that you plug in the side of it and just backs up all the shit that you've been doing on there. And so... It's saved on a, I don't know, like a gimmick drive thing. I don't know. People that know technology know what the fuck I'm talking about. I don't. I just right. know that I backed right. up my computer about a week ago. So he goes, did you back it up? I said, goddamn right I did. I listened to you. <laughs> and so I'd, I'd saved pretty much everything, all the information I had on the computer. And then he came over and then installed it all. And then uh, I took care of him. He rode off in the sunset, and I was able to turn my podcast in. So, man, my computer skills ain't worth the flying fuck. And I remember this, Teddy, when I was a senior in high school in Edna, Texas. Uh, I was signing up for my classes. Uh, it was when I was a junior, signing up for my senior, senior classes. And there was a, I needed an elective, and there was a class called Computer Science. And this is a Liberty High School in Edna, Texas. So I walked into the room, I looked around, and there was 25 big-ass computers. And this was back when computers were big as fuck. And I told myself, because, man, I was, you know, like Mr. Jock Football back in Edna, a little bitty-ass town. I said, man, I'm an athlete. I'm a football player. I ain't never going to use no goddamn computer. So I didn't take the computer science class. Fast forward, Teddy, to 2016, where you can't fucking do nothing without getting on a goddamn computer. I never figured I'd ever have anything to do with computers or lawyers. My buddies used to always tell me, well, i got to talk to my lawyer about this. i got to talk to my lawyer about that. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, why would you ever need a lawyer? Well, Teddy, at, at 50 years of age in your life and 51 years of age in my life, now i got way too many lawyers and way too many computers in my fucking life. But you can't do it without them. Well, you got a lot more need for lawyers, you know, with with all of your professional shit than than I do. But as far as the computers go, no, dude, I was in the same boat. You know, I was an athlete, and it's like, dude, computers really fuck that man. That's a, that's an easy three credits. You go in there and you fiddle fart around. I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna do this. I'm never gonna be bothered by it. it does not pertain to me, you know. And now you talk about an Achilles heel. I mean, I can't. You know, upload, download, you know, uh, uh, defrag, none of that. All that stuff is Greek to me. It's like, dude, and I got to pay some cat to come over with his 1970 porn star mustache, you know, to come over and sit down at my computer for 20 minutes, do his thing, and give me a bill for 80 bucks. And he's like, all right, dude, you know, try to lay off the porn, you know, see him, and, you know, Six weeks, like, dude, really? How did how did you how did you do that stuff? I mean, I can build anything. I can't I can't unlock my computer. You know, it's like, oh lordy. Goddamn, dude! With, with technology, and that's gonna spin me to my next story about my MRI, <laughs> dude. I don't know how many MRIs I've had in my life, from my neck, my first neck injury back in '96, whenever it was. And until just my most recent one, seven or eight days ago, man, I'm claustrophobic as a motherfucker. <laughs> and so, man, I was, uh, I had to get two MRIs for my shoulder surgery. And then I went in for the pre-op visit, which you do before every major surgery. You get your game plan down, talk about what's going on. You're on the same page. Everything's cool. All that professional stuff. And you got a game plan. 
And then because of the way the pain was in my shoulder off that anterior delta bicep tendon and that, you know, the medial head on the side, I, it was a classic infra, infra and supra tear in the back until I threw those punches at WrestleMania and fucked it all up. And then it was everything. So he said, man, he goes, I want to get one more look at this shoulder because I want to get into the pectoral region and check that out because your pec ties into, you know, that area part of your shoulder. So, man, I'm thinking, well, fuck. On the last two MRIs, I knew I was going to get an MRI, so I kind of came ready, if you know what I mean. Right, So right, right. I had a game plan. And so this time, I'm going in, I ain't ready. And so I ain't got nothing. And so I'm thinking, well, fuck. Now, I have gotten a couple of MRIs just nilly willy with nothing but i that was gritting them out with someone holding on to my foot or whatever <laughs> hey dude i'll tell you right now they used to call me the toughest son of a bitch in the history of wwe <laughs> hey that was a shoot i'll beat a motherfucker's ass and you can tie me to a damn tree and beat me with a tire iron but if you want to stick me into a little bitty ass tube where you almost have to get ky jelly on my shoulders and shoehorn me in that motherfucker Homie, don't play that shit. <laughs> so check this you out. Me, and, you, and you give me shit for being afraid of the dark. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, that's, a le- that's a legitimate fear. <laughs> I'm telling you. Dude, so I figured, okay, you know, I- I'm just going to ride this shit out. And the, the, right. la- the last few, I've been going in that long-ass tube head first. Well, this time I'm going in the tube feet first. And because they're taking a picture of my pectoral region, they're laying this grid across my chest, which makes it even tighter when I go in that little bitty fucking tube. I mean, this motherfucker's tight. If you can find some pussy that's this tight, you better hang on to it. (laughs) So I go sliding in there foot first, brave as a motherfucker. Now, keep in mind, a couple of weeks ago, I talked to a Navy SEAL named Mark Devine. A Navy SEAL. You know how badass the Navy SEALs are, Teddy? Yes, sir. So anyway, uh, he finished number one in his class, and he was on a, a mission one time, and he was navigating. The other guy was driving, and the the Navy SEALs always say two is one, one is none, meaning if you lose something. So, you know, I guess his, uh, his uh, scuba mask got watered in with water and he couldn't reach back and find his other other uh, mask to do a switch out so he just started box breathing and maintaining his concentration and his focus to complete the three-hour mission and while his buddy did double duty he drove and navigated the the, uh some type of marine craft i don't know if it was a boat a sub or whatever and he made it feel like 45 minutes according to the book unbeatable mind which i'm still reading i'm stuck on page 80 so anyway, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, uh, Mark Devine, Navy SEAL, box breathing. And box breathing as a relaxation and focus technique, you take a deep breath and you breathe from your diaphragm, Teddy, not, that, not your chest. You breathe in from your diaphragm for a five count, and then you hold for a five count. You exhale for a five count. You hold for a five count, and then you inhale and you repeat the process. So it's a box and it's a relaxation technique, which you can actually slow down your physiological functions, your heart rate, your blood pressure. I've done it when I've gone in for physicals and slowed my uh, heart rate down and lowered my br- blood pressure by doing the things that I read in Mark's book. So this lady and these people at the clinic that I'm at are the utmost professionals, so I will say that. And they're awesome at their job, and they're just there to try to help you. But again, when you go shoving me in that little bitty-ass tube, and i got to scrunch up my shoulders like a motherfucker, and I make the mistake of opening up my eyes, and that ceiling is about three inches from my eyes, dude, that's too close. I'm too tight, and if I need to get out, because I'm always thinking like this, Teddy, what if there's an earthquake, the power goes down, uh, how am I going to get out of this fucking tube, because my wing is shot, my shoulder can't do nothing with, the other one's over, you know, I'm I'm laying there with my hands in my crotch, and so I'm in a predicament of a supine position, laid in a tube, and Kristen's in the other room, so what if she don't know to come pull my ass out of the fucking tube, how am I going to get out of there, so... 
I start I start thinking about that while she's sliding me in this tube. And I'm like, all right, hang on for a second and back me out. And in your hand, Teddy, they, they give you a little uh, a ball to squeeze, which means that's like the uh, 911 call that says, hey, get me the fuck out of here. So right. I got that ball in my left hand. I'm going in that tube, and I'm thinking, hey, fuck, man, I got it. Ain't nothing, big, ain't nothing but a thing like a chicken wing on a shoestring, Mark Devine technique, box breathing, in and out. Deep breaths, focus, concentrate, relaxation. I'm in there for about five minutes. And when you go in there, Teddy, have you ever had an MRI? Yes. Yes, I have. Only one. Well, what did you get MRI'd? Dude, I went back on a fly ball and uh, hit the fence. So what did MRI? No, my ribs, ribs and, and my back because, dude, I, shit, I thought something was broke bigger in Dallas. Okay, so I'm in there, and uh, I'm in that damn tube, and I'm thinking, okay, everything's cool, just relax, it ain't going to last long. And uh, it, when you get in there, as you know, you hear this. Yeah. I mean, it's knocking. If, if, if no one's ever had an MRI, it's like knocking on wood, and like a jackhammer going off, and it's this crazy noise, so I've got these earplugs in. And the noise don't bother me, because I'm halfway deaf anyway. My wife right now is trying to talk me into getting a pair of hearing aids, which I think I'm going to say, uh, and to. Not so fast, my friend. I'm about five minutes in that <laughs> procedure, Teddy, and it's a 30-minute procedure. And, man, I tap out. I said, you know what? I said, I, I squeezed that ball twice, and she didn't say nothing. I said, get me out. <laughs> I said, I said, I'm about to come out. <laughs> and, man... I felt like the biggest pussy in the fucking world. I got up all <laughs> this this lady is a professional and she she does MRIs for a living. That's what she does. Right. People go in and out of that tube all day long. And now here comes the biggest, baddest motherfucker in Los Angeles and he taps out five minutes into fucking MRI. So she says, uh, well, do you, uh, do you need something to relax? I said, yeah, I do. I said, uh, let me go talk to the doctor. Well, you know, I, most time when I go to get an MRI, I come prepared. Uh, this yeah. time I did not, and this time I was going to need some help. So I told Kristen, she was in the other room, and, you know, dude, when you got to fucking tell your wife, hey, man, I fucking wigged out in, in the MRI tube. It ain't a real macho time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I fucking feel like a fucking pussy. So anyway, I'm feeling like a loser. And, and so I fucking get in my goddamn, we drove my Ford Bronco. I get in the Bronco and she says, well, what are we going to do? Go to the house and get something? And because uh, I have to take sleep medication for me to sleep, and I said, "Well, no." I said, "I think I'm a I'm a I'm a redneck. I just want to do a quick fix." And so I hauled ass down to the CVS drugstore, the closest beer store I could find. I got out on the fucking road in that damn Bronco, and there's liquor stores everywhere in Los Angeles, but I couldn't find one single damn store. So I said, "CVS got to have a beer, a beer section back there." I walk right. back there, and I think, you know what? It's probably gonna take. Right now, Teddy, I got I got measured the other day. I thought I was about six one. I used to be six two, but I got dropped on my head so many times. I figured I was six one. I clocked into six one and a half. So next time you see me, if you're looking up at me a little bit, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm officially six one and a half and two seventy two. And I figured, okay, a thirty minute procedure here is gonna equal about four beers drank inside of fifteen minutes. So, lo and behold, there is a God, hallelujah, a miracle, there's a beer section. So I go back to the beer section, and, dude, I'm a beer snob. I'm just thinking they're going to have light beer and shit like that. Man, I'm looking for craft beer. You know, I'm going to have to start yeah, drinking. Yeah, yeah. If I'm going to have to start drinking at 9.15 in the morning, you know, I, I, I want to drink a craft beer. So immediately I'm looking for Steve Austin's Broken Skull IPA from El Segundo Brewing Company, and they ain't got none. But they do have some Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. They had a uh, Ballast Point Sculpin, which was used to be one of my go-to IPAs. And right. then I see it. I'm thinking, okay, uh, I don't need to be uh, drinking bottles inside the vehicle. Uh, there's a, there's a six-pack of cans. 
There's Point the Way IPA from Golden Road Brewing Company, and that's a pretty good IPA. It ain't the best, but it's pretty damn good. So I bought a six-pack of Point the Way IPA. I went back to the car, and I walked right around to the passenger side. I said, go ahead and drive. And my wife goes over to the driver's side of the seat, and she had brought the damn same Yeti cooler that I'm drinking out of right now. She was drinking coffee out of because these motherfuckers work for hot shit and cold shit, as you know, Teddy. Oh, yeah. So I take the lid off that thing, I dump the rest of the coffee out, and just pour the damn Point the Way IPA in there. And it was like it was a coffee infused IPA, Teddy. I was on I was I was in a creative space. I might have created a new cocktail. But anyway, dude, I told, I put my wife in there, I put my seatbelt on, I said, All right, head back to the clinic. The clinic's all about four miles away. Uh, by the time we got back here, I drank about two and a half beers, and she pulled in. She goes, well, what are we going to do? I said, well, I'm going to drink two more of these beers, and we're going to go in and do that MRI. So I'm sitting there chilling like a gangster under the underground parking, drinking beer out of a motherfucking <laughs> Yeti cooler so I can get a buzz on to get a motherfucking MRI. <laughs> So we, <laughs> I get four beers in. I said, all right, I'm ready. I'm kind of chilled out. Teddy, I could drink all night long, and you know that, and we've done it. <laughs> we've done it. <laughs> but this is early in the morning. I just need to fucking chill for 30 minutes so I can get an MRI, and I'm good. So we go back, and, man, that place is busy as fuck. I was able to get in line and get back in line. I had to wait for a couple of people. And, you know, by the time I'd waited, you know, I wanted Kristen. She wouldn't comply with me on this. She's my, my, my wife will do anything. She's the best wife in the world. I said, Hey man, would you put another one of them beers in your purse for me? And she goes, are you kidding me? I said, no. I said, you know, if I got to wait, I said, fucking buzz going to wear off. I'm going to need another beer. And so she said, being the, you know, um, uh, responsible human being that she is and me being a fucking idiot. I said, okay, I'm just going to have to wing it on four. So we go in there, wait for a couple people to get their scans done, and then I go in. And so, man, they slide me back in that motherfucker, Teddy, feet first. I get all the way in there, and I said, just go. I said, just go. I'm ready. And all of a sudden, they started clicking and clocking and all the noises and shit like that. And this time, Teddy, the last time they wouldn't let my wife in the room. But this time, they said, hey, this motherfucker's crazy. we got to chill this motherfucker down. So they let my wife sit in the room. Now, years ago, when I first got dropped on my head in New Jersey, Bill Apter of Pro Wrestling Illustrated was there with me on my first MRI. And there's a picture of Bill that used to be in the magazines holding on to my foot. And I had my little booty socks on. And Bill, because I trusted him so much, I knew he'd be there for me, held on to my foot. So anyway, Kristen wasn't holding on to my feet. But what they did... This time, she was sitting there reading her book, and they gave me a pair of glasses. And, Teddy, if I opened up my eyes, it was mirrored sunglasses. I could see backwards through the tube. So if I just opened my most of the time I kept my eyes closed. But when I started freaking out, I could open my eyes, look back, and see Kristen reading her book. And I could see her looking in the tube every now and then checking on me. So I knew she had my back. Right. Right. So anyway... Man, four beers was, it was about right, but about 10 minutes left, there's a goddamn airplane taking off over here, about 10 minutes left to go on that MRI, man, my heart started beating again, I kind of started sweating, and I said, dude, you can't puss out on this motherfucker, you four beers in, you're 20 minutes in, you got a few more to go, just hang with it, so I started Mark Divine, box breathing, Navy SEAL like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> dude finish the test finish the goddamn test they put me they pulled me out of that motherfucker and i damn near told my wife i said take me back to the cvs i want to get a goddamn pair of cigarettes i want to get a goddamn pack of cigarettes and smoke every one of those motherfuckers <laughs> and that's my mri story and i'm sticking to it Dude, I had no idea you were that fucking claustrophobic about that stuff. Oh, dude, man, I, I don't give a fuck about anything. Nothing nothing rattles me, nothing scares me, but when you start shoving me in that fucking tube, forget about mm. it. 
when you got shoved in that tube back when you hurt your ribs playing softball, going for the almost home run, are you cool with tight spaces? Dude, that, that shit was so relaxing to me because they put you in there. And, and what had happened was we were playing softball, and I was playing outfield, going back on a long fly ball, and I was playing left, and the left center fielder was just watching the, the ball fly. And it was about a four-foot high fence because we were playing on the Little League field. So I put my right hand out, you know, to feel for the fence because there's no warning track, so you don't, you can't, you know, get that, you know, get that uh, that sensory perception of when you hit the gravel and you know you're getting close. This is so back when I, real men played softball and there wasn't a warning track. Correct, correct. Yeah, Go ahead. you know, so I, I I put my right hand out to feel the fence and I left lift up with my left hand to catch the ball, well, I don't feel the warning track under my feet, and I'm so tall, my hand went over the top of the fence, and, you know, going back at two-thirds speed, you know, I hit that fence, and basically just, you know, Ken levered over it, boom, it was a home run, and I'm landing on the other side of the fence, and it was like, boy, that smarted. And I yelled at Marty, I was like, dude, really? Really? You couldn't have, you couldn't have hauled the fence? And he was like, God damn, Teddy, I was watching the ball, man. I wasn't watching, you know, any of it. Yeah. No, so, you know, I was I was racked up for a long time. And I was like, man, I need to. But check I, it I out. To- you take the patented cantilever bump over the outfield fence. The dude hits a home run. He's trotting around the bases. And to me, dude, <laughs> One time I was riding my bike and I was riding up a hill. I couldn't make up with the hill and I started going backwards, riding backwards, and then I just plopped over and fell on a tree stump. And the, that tree stump just dug into my rib cage. And I remember my buddy standing over me, Billy Buchanan, and I was I was on the ground and I was like, because uh, 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 <laughs> I had the goddamn wind knocked out of me. I couldn't breathe for like two fucking minutes. Did that happen to you or were you copacetic? Oh yeah. Yeah, no, 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 I was, I was stuck like Chuck, man. I was laying on the ground. I was like, oh, man, my big ass, you know, flopped on the ground like a sack of potatoes. It's like, dude, really? You know, I mean, I'm old to start with, you know, and then to, to hit the ground like that, it's like, God. Dude, when Arizona. was this? I'm thinking this was like in Arizona when you're like a young kid. No, dude, no, no. This was about three years ago. Oh, this you was damn near old as fuck. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, here, here in Rockport, yeah. Now, did I, I hit the ground, and I was like, oh, dude, you know what? I don't know if you guys know it or not, but I'm fucking little. you got to take care of me. <laughs> <laughs> local icon and a local treasure. <laughs> he shoots, he scores. The birthday boy, Ted Fowler. God damn it. <laughs> Well, so so they they take you and you go to the MRI. Did they? No, go? dude, I finished. I finished the shit up. No, we we finished the game. Oh no, here's where they here. Okay, hold on. Let me pause for oh, the fucking yeah, hero. Yeah. The big finish. You mm-hmm. finished the game. Let me let, let me guess. You're, you're down. You're down by three points. There's three men on. There's two outs. You have two strikes on you. That last pitch comes. And you knock it out of the park, grand slam, and you win the game for your team. No, dude, I was about three Jack and Cokes in. I didn't feel anything. No, but that sounded no. good as Bucko did it. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, you did. I mean, I think he had a big career as a as a as a writer. Dude, I might write a fucking movie about that call. I'm gonna call it the softball player. <laughs> the, the train wreck from Rockport. Yeah. Dude, I didn't know no, Rockport dude, was- had an MRI tube. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, down at the down at the clinic, down at the clinic, right there, about about a hundred yards down from the liquor store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got the one perfect location. Caddy, the, the caddy corner at Ace Hardware, man. If you need it all, if you if you need a screw or you got screwed, we got it. Yeah, we're we cover all bases. All right, everybody, let me jump in here right now. Hold it there, Teddy. We'll come right back right after a word from the sponsors. Keep the show on here for free. Hey, I'm going to let you in on a little secret about True Car and the True Car app. And you can use True Car to help you buy a used car. It ain't just for new car purchases. There are over 500,000 pre-owned vehicles available from True Car certified dealers nationwide. 
And there are over 11,000 TrueCar certified dealers. And TrueCar lets you get upfront pricing information on new and used vehicles and lets you see what other people paid for the car you want so that you feel confident you're getting a fair price. With TrueCar via their TrueCar pricing curve, you see what other people paid for the car and you lock in your guaranteed savings. Then you can connect with a local certified dealer of your choosing, take them your TrueCar guaranteed savings certificate, and make your car buying experience quick and easy. Over 2 million cars have been sold to TrueCar users by the TrueCar Certified Dealer Network. And TrueCar users save an average of over $3,000 off MSRP. So when you're ready to buy a new or used car, visit TrueCar.com or download the TrueCar app to enjoy a better car buying experience. Some features not available in all states. Steve Austin. Steve Austin. Unleashed. Unleashed. Hey, dude, before you, I want to ask you about what's going on at the Broken Skull Ranch. Everything's been going good down there, but I was on your uh, Instagram account. Uh, what's your Instagram account name? Ted Fowler361? Uh, Ted Fowler361. Just like yeah. your Twitter account. Yeah. Dude, you caught a big ass redfish. Y'all been catching a bunch of fish down here? What's the story? Oh, dude, I started, you know, once I, I slowed down on softball, started going fishing. Uh, we went down to Baffin Bay a couple of weeks a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, Baffin Bay, South Texas, that, that is the premier spot for big, big trout. Went down there, and, I mean, we tore them up, tore up the trout. Not not real big trout, but, I mean, we tore up a bunch of trout. And lo and behold, that big-ass redfish, you know, hooked onto my croaker, and, man, it was on. It was about a 20-minute fight. Biggest, biggest red I've ever caught, 38 inches. What pound no, test you running I'm, out there, Teddy? Uh, dude, I'm running a 20 pound braid with a 25 hey, pound leader. Hey, check this out. Let me cut into your story. I, I, yeah. I, I'm talking on this Blue Yeti microphone. There's a mute button on it because I don't want to interrupt your story. And this is an award winning podcast that never won any awards. So I hit the mute button and I went, <laughs> and my wife saw me because she was going to check on the laundry. And I held up my glass because I need another cocktail. So anyway, uh, Kristen, I'm talking to Teddy on the podcast. How you doing? <laughs> Yeah, you are a bartender. I mean, I've been holding down the fort with my bad wing. I took a shower by myself. Got, I, I took my Band-Aids off by myself. Wow. Here's the story. I used this knife to wow. reach over here and peel this one off, and then I used the uh, uh, tongs to get it all the way off, pull it off. Oh, Amazing. Very creative. Okay. God damn. Oh, she's, she's still disappointed in me that I fucking tapped out on the fucking MRI, Teddy. <laughs> I don't know when the next time anything's going to happen over here in our boom boom room, but yeah, uh, damn it. those are those are the same, those are the same tongs that flip her tofu burger oh, no, there. Or veggie burger or She's going to go make me a drink, uh, Kristen. That's that's two shots of tequila, a couple of extra rocks, then top it off with margarita mix, yeah, uh, back and forth, uh, salt on the rim. Hello, hello, three six one. God damn it, Teddy! So a twenty uh, a, a twenty pound braid. What what pound? What's what pound is a test line? Oh, uh, you know it is twenty pound braid and a twenty five pound uh, fluorocarbon leader. You know. So, okay, I mean, but what's the fish, fishing line? There ain't no fishing line, man. You dude, go straight braided? braid. God yeah, damn, dude! Things have changed when I was a kid, dude. I'm a year oh. older than you, but I grew up fishing in Port O'Connor, Texas. And man, we was fishing on. Man, I don't even know what, what our dad had our rig. We were fishing with Mitchell three hundreds back in. And, uh, God damn, I mean, probably 12, 15 pound tests, but I mean, a lot of times no, we, we fish dude, with that dude. lighter shit just so you, you know, it was kind of like a challenge and halfway sporting or whatever the fuck you want to say. Dude, if you saw the braided line, I mean, they sell it like if you get a 30 pound braid, it's the same diameter as 10 pound monofilament. So, you know, you think back to, to your day of fishing and you had, 12-pound monofilament line, and right. you're thinking the clear line. Okay, that's great. Yep. You know what? That equates to about a 40-pound braid, which is unheard of for what we're doing. This stuff is whisper thin. You know, the trick is to be able to tie the right kind of knot with your braid and your, you know, your leader material because it's like, you know, apples and oranges trying to get them to meet up. You know, but it, it's it's... It is so high tech anymore. The the line, the braided line is so thin, you can feel every single bump. When your bait is on there and it and it starts flickering, because imagine 
your bait fish is thrown out there in the depth. Right. There's your there's your predatory fish, a redfish or a trout, swimming around looking at it going, <laughs> hello. You know, so, of course, that little bait fish starts getting nervous and it's flittering around. Dude, you can feel that, you know, through your, through your fishing rod. You can feel when your bait starts getting nervous and you know right before you're about to get hit. That's how high-tech shit has gotten. Wow. Teddy, you cruel motherfucker. I can only imagine the horror that that bait fish feels as you hook that hook through the underneath part of its spine through the back. I guess that's where you're hooking them right there back behind the head, right, so they can still swim? Actually, you hook it close to the ass. Close really? The ass. Things have changed since yeah. back, back in the day. Man, we was hooking them high. Y'all, did the style change? Y'all low riding now? Yeah, you, you want that thing to start swimming away like it's fleeing. You know, ah. that's a, that, so that, that enacts that predatory instinct of those fish, you know, here, this little rascal's trying to run away from me. So I'm going to whack his ass. You know, that, that's the thought process of the red of the now, trout. Teddy, you selfish this. cocksucker. Let's talk ah. about that little bait fish. You just fucking used out there just so you could reel in a big fucking fish, throw it on your grill like a hot shot and eat the sound bitch for nutrition, <laughs> high protein, a great clean meal. But what about the bait fish, Teddy? And, and, and that's before we talk about the trout or the redfish that you ate for your meal. But you use that bait fish just so your selfish ass could eat a motherfucking bigger fish. Are you happy with yourself, you fucking sportsman? Did if they were more valuable, they'd, they'd raise the price from four dollars a dozen. <laughs> yeah. No, dude. That's you know. There's there's everything must give its life in order to you know. Advanced life, so to speak. Yeah, I, I sleep. I sleep real well at night. <laughs> Dude, I, I tell you, you know, back back in the day when I was a kid, I was always been kind of soft hearted, but I love catching fish and uh, hunting deer and stuff like that. Right. But man, we'd be out there cleaning fucking trout, and I'd think, man, you know, was yet, you know. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't either you or me, but, you know, fuck, I, I feel for him a little bit, but at the end of the day, man, I got to eat, and I like catching fish. Oh, you're absolutely right. You know what I mean? I, 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 like that big-ass fish, that big old red I caught down there, man, I turned it loose. You know, and everybody was like, dude, you serious? Because you can keep one oversized red. Right. And any anything over 28 inches, which is the legal limit, uh, you can catch one a year and keep it. Then, you know what? A fish like that is like, you know, that, that, that big ass buck, you know, that you see at five and a half. It's like, man, that is a stud. Do I want to shoot it? Yeah. But it would, it would provide so much more to the gene pool if you just let it go and, you know, yeah, it was cool enough that I saw it. And you let it go. That's that's the way I looked at that red. This is the biggest biggest redfish I've ever caught. And I sat there and I held it and I was like, man, solid. And I, you know, took the hook out of its mouth and I revived it, you know, push it back and forth through yep. the water, get it through its gills, and it swam off. And I was like, dude, I'm solid with that. You know, that's, Oh, dude, you got to catch it and have the yeah. thrill of seeing it. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah, down yeah. with that whole program. Yeah. But yeah, man. I, you know, I, I mean, some little kid catch that monster. You know, and, and more power to them. I mean, it's, it's you know, that, that's cool shit. I ain't got to kill everything that I come across. But maybe the redfish no. has learned a lesson, and maybe it will not chase another smaller fish that's hooked to a line. I, mean, Teddy, I, got, mad, I got mad skills when it comes to fishing. You can't, yeah, don't don't put it off on the redfish. That's something hey, dude, here's one for you. I know you've been wanting to bow hunt at, at the Broken Skull Ranch. You ever do any bow fishing out there? Because that, sounds, that, that to me, seems like it'd be fun as shit. You know what, I I would like to because I just fired up, I got a, a 3D target. I don't know if you saw that deal I saw on Twitter. It. Yeah, yeah, I got hey, that. Hey, now let me ask up. you something. Did you shoot that group or did you go stick those arrows in? Because you shoot the pretty uh, tight group. Oh, dude, that ain't Hollywood. That <laughs> ain't, no, this ain't Hollywood. This is Rockport. Yeah, no, that's how I roll. Yeah, yeah. Look at some of the, look at some of the holes around, you know, yeah. that wasn't What distance was that from? Tank. <laughs> what distance was that from? Thirty yards. Oh, that's pretty, that's a real good group for thirty yards. Yeah, that's a that yeah, but that wasn't the first time. I mean, and in, in, in you know all all things being honest, no, the first the first time I was throwing a handful of sand. But once you get 
you know, once you get dialed in and figured out, because that was a new target and I didn't, you know, realize where the, the heart was and the liver and all that stuff. Uh, dude, them, them carbon arrows, man, you talked about how technology has, has brought the game up. You know, them little teeny fletchings and them carbon arrows, dude, it's like throwing darts. It's sick. Yeah. Well, before we wrap this thing up and uh, take it out and uh, go home, uh, Teddy, what are you working on right now? When are you heading back down to Broken Skull Ranch? Everything cool down there? You noticed any signs of intrusion? Any uh, Find any sheds? Uh, anything good going on down there? Oh, dude, I'm heading down uh, Friday. I got to meet with a customer on Thursday, get to kind of half day it, and then I'm heading down Friday. Went down about a week and a half ago, found found a bunch of sheds and you know nothing nothing off the chart but it was you know it was a good trip nonetheless did but i mean everything is green deer herd is solid ranch is phenomenal Looks you know good. pretty soon i mean the deer have just dropped their horns but here pretty quick they'll be uh start growing those things back and like you posted on your uh twitter and your instagram account the other day when you i think when you showed that uh 3d target deer season is literally six months away yeah yeah, it's, it's it's real close. Tell you before we go, yeah. uh, an intriguing statement you made earlier on a podcast about a pair of blue panties. What happened? God damn it. <laughs> oh, fuck, here we go. Uh, I had a housekeeper about, about a year, year and a half ago, and it's kind of a salty, blonde-haired woman, kind of tatted up, nice rack, uh, Hired her to take care of my place, and she started to get a little, a little, a little friendly with me, yeah. which was cool, you know. But I was, I was, you know, hooking up with that chick from the lumber yard, so it was like, hey, you know what, man, it's too much, too many, you know, too much juggling going on. That some bitch come to the house and started drinking my beer while she was cleaning the house, so I had to let her go. Okay. And that created a stir with the girl I was dating. So she and I broke up. So I got a new housekeeper. Well, this girl's solid. Big titties on this girl. Big titties. Uh, but she's married. Nice broad. Well, I didn't think anything about it. I thought, you know what, man, we'll keep this, uh, keep all of this above board. Won't do anything stupid. Um, she comes every other Thursday. Prior to that, I had a little social interlude here at the house with a young lady. And she, after we finished our business, she pulled up her britches and headed out. I didn't realize she left her drawers here, right? And they were underneath the bed. I had no idea. So my cleaning lady came on Thursday, cleaned the house, did her shift, got her check, and left, left the house. I came home that Thursday after work. And I walked into my bedroom, and my bed is nicely made, crisp, and up on the pillows is a pair of blue lace panties. And I was like, motherfucker, because this chick's married. You know, and I thought she was shooting up a flare, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, because I, yeah, dude, I mean, imagine that. Because you, you're, you know what I mean? You're, 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 you know, you're hemmed up with Kristen. And you walk into the, because you got a cleaning lady, and you walk into the bedroom, and there's a pair of drawers up there, and it's like, hold on. <laughs> is, is this a signal? Is that, what am I supposed yeah, to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah like, buddy, Houston, we have a problem. It's like, <laughs> God damn, really? Really? I mean, that's, um, I'm, I'm largely intrigued, but by the same token, I like my house being clean. <laughs> this chick does a solid job. And I'm like, God damn it, I just, I, I just got shed of the other one, and she was putting the bite on me pretty good. I was more upset that she was drinking my beer, and I was like, <laughs> God damn it, fuck, I, <laughs> do I exude that much? <laughs> so what happened? I don't know, I, I kind of I let it go, and I waited a couple of days, and I sent her a text message, and I said, you know, hey, I, you know, I'm not sure if, if I came across the wrong way and she hit me with the old LOL, 
don't kid yourself. I found them when I moved your bed. And I was like, oh, fucking snap. <laughs> and then it come back to me. I was like, motherfucker, that was that day. Yeah, that was, that was the, the hookup I had the other night. <laughs> like, bitch. Yeah, then you start eating that shit sandwich. It's like, you know, man, I, I thought I had a lot of stroke. Apparently I don't. <laughs> God damn it, dude. If you was in a crisis or a crunch, I, I was willing to fucking charter a private jet and fly down to Rockport and just stick my hand in the air and just say, those were my blue panties. That's how fucking good a friend you are. <laughs> dude, I appreciate it, but it's <laughs> motherfucker, man. I, you talk about a little deflation of your ego. It's like, hey, sugar, man, I appreciate it. But you know what? I would just as soon you keep cleaning my house. And she's like, dude, don't, don't flatter yourself. Those are not my fucking jokes. <laughs> God damn it. Tell you yeah. how to hide a hog over there in Rockport, Texas. Happy birthday. What's going on in the work schedule? You staying busy down there? Dude, it's off the hook. Yeah. I mean, it's blowing and going. Yeah. I mean, I would have, I would have shot up a flare to you earlier today, but I was meeting with customers. It's like, man, I'm, you know, picking up, picking up a bunch of jobs, and unfortunately, it's because, you know, contractors are doing people wrong. You know, I don't know if you saw that thing on Twitter, where um, there was that that contractor in Rockport that got busted on, yeah. you know, one of those one of those news shows, yeah. Yeah, dude, I know that cat. Yeah, but, you know, but it, people that know you're square and you're straight up. I mean, you're hiring yeah, your eye yeah, but when you're signing off a job, your, your shit's done right and you're honest. And you, if you say you're going to do something, you live up to your word and you do exactly what you're going to say. Quality work. Yeah, dude, that's that's, that's the, the irony of the whole thing. I mean, these people are getting screwed over by contractors and they're getting, you know, my name and number. And it's like, you know, man, I'll, you know, I'll hook you up. I mean, I feel bad because, you know, you got taken, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing this shit for free. I mean, I feel bad as far as you paid for it. And they're like, no, dude, we're just, you know, we want the problem to go away. You know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate for the consumer, but it's good for Ted. Well, oh, there's shit. Now, well, there's a lot of shitheads out there, Teddy. They, they, oh, do, no, they, they, they right. do the exposés on the fucking uh, garages and mechanics and shit all the time. And someone yeah. goes, and they'll they'll rig a car up so they know what's up. Have the hidden cameras in there, and all of a sudden, a mechanic comes in there and says, "Hey, blah blah blah, you need this." Hey. Well, no, you didn't. All you need to do is hook up the vacuum hose. But yeah, to your point, the contractor and someone goes in, spouts off a bunch of bullshit, and then t turn in subgrade work, bill you out the ass, it ain't done, it ain't permitted. Uh, and everything's fucked up. But anyway, fuck all that. Last thing, it is turkey season. You're going to go down to the ranch. Yes, or you're going to try to get some turkeys in because last time I was there, I did see three turkeys. You know, back when I bought that place eight years ago, <clears throat> that place was a haven for turkeys. They were everywhere. And they've really disappeared since, I guess, the drought happened. So I saw a couple, another back on the property. Man, tell me the tell me the story real quick again. Why those turkeys left? Was it the drought, or was it when it flooded down there that pushed them away? Man, when the oasis flooded and it and it knocked them off of their roost, that's what screwed it up. You know, a number of years ago, when the water got super duper high, it pushed them off of their roost, so they went elsewhere. I I am going down this weekend, and I will go down on the river and you know try to call in some turkey. Um, did I, I, I've seen one hen running around on the ranch and that's it. You know, the, the high water pushed their roost and, you know, I think they're, I think they're gone. But it's really strange because I mean, the time you're talking about is give or take around six, seven years ago. Yeah. And I just would have figured they would have made a comeback. I just, because of force of habit, because, you know, that was their roots, because they were, dude, they were there. One time, and this is a true story, I've told, I've told the story a few times, but I was down there on the on the uh, southwest side of the ranch, on the low fence side, by the river, and that deer stand where we got that, uh, there's that post over there with that uh, feeder hanging from a wire, and that yes, road sir. that runs up to that stand, dude, that, that, that corn feeder went off, 
and I swear to God, on a damn stack of Bibles, dude, literally, there, I stopped counting. It, it, it was over 150 turkey walking side by side in mass to this damn spin feeder. And it was unbelievable because the sun had just come up and it was shimmering. You know, they get, they, they got that, those pretty feathers. It was just shimmering on the backs of the sea of turkeys. And there's almost really over 150 birds walking and they cleaned out that corn lickety split and then they just walked off. And to go from those kind of numbers, which is insane. And if you, and there's a lot of people who listen to podcasts, Teddy, who have never seen a wild turkey in the wild. And to see that many of them there in one spot, and now, damn near, they're gone. I saw three the other day before I left the ranch, and I was happy as fuck. I mean, I, I closed out a bunch of them at Riverside in the pop-up line. Right. You know, on the low fence side, yeah. And that's and 500 I'm, yards from where I saw them. Yeah, dude, I'm closing them out a bunch. But, the, you know, the river flooded, and it knocked them off. And I think they're set up where they're at. Until they get pushed off again, you know they just they they just haven't haven't moved back. But I'll tell you what, man, fucking deer deer herd off the chart, man. And especially you know this year with the rain, the weather, it's it's going to be phenomenal. It is going to be phenomenal. Teddy, before I let you go, I was doing a Q and A from a Tuesday podcast, my first podcast back from shoulder surgery. And just right. trying to trying to keep it simple. And one of the questions I did not get to, and I'll end up uh, getting to this because I'm gonna do another Q and A. A dude asked me. He said, "Steve, he goes, why have you guys not shot a reality television show down there at the Broken Skull Ranch of uh, you and Teddy and uh, Kristen and all the things you guys talk about on podcasts? Because it sounds like it'd be fascinating." And I'm like. I've yet to answer this. Well, I'll answer right now. Dude, can you imagine? And I've pitched you this idea for the last, what, three, four, five years of having a show out there. Uh, and it's not about the hunting. It's about the getting ready for the hunt and all the bullshit and the good times and, and the work uh, that, that we do down there. And every time I've pitched that idea, I always get the same response back. Well, do you have any friends with big personalities? No, I don't. I got a friend Ted. He's a real dude and he likes to drink. But no, we're not fucking loud and and stupid just to be loud oh, and dude. stupid. We're we're fucking real. So, yeah, it's like the the dude. I don't know how many thousands of calories I've burned laughing and shucking and jiving and having a good time out there with you. But dude, that that place is made for a reality television show. So. Uh, that was my that was my one Q and A uh, for this podcast was yeah man I've I've thought about that many times and I damn near hired a camera crew as a matter of fact I had talked to I owe everybody a beer my iPhone just Dude, off twice. I was say, Hello. I, I'm drinking a margarita right 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 I, I'm drinking a margarita right now Teddy I go down I'm to the Jack and Coke. Uh, Teddy check this out I go down to El Segundo <laughs> Brewing Company about every week or every other weekend and I buy the whole house around. Right, and then if I'm feeling good, I'll buy them a whole another round. So I'm paying up on all these damn things that I've uh, talked about on the podcast. When something goes off, right. if you're down there, us go to a brewing company. I'll buy you a beer. But going back to the reality show thing, dude, man, we we have so much fun out there. It's like it, it ain't manufactured, it ain't fake, it ain't written. No. It's fucking real. So it'd be cool to film something down there. And I, and I'd actually called uh, my good buddy Diamond Dallas Page. Uh, those guys came down to Lake Hartwell when I was filming Redneck Island this past season. We filmed that uh, Kawasaki uh, jet ski commercial. Uh, well, spot. I mean, it was just a video we made. And they did a phenomenal job on it, Chris and Nathan. And so uh, I called DDP. And back when I had that other double wide out there, I was going to hire two guys to capture everything we were doing. But by, right. the, by the time I had finished two months of Broken Skull, or two and a half months of Broken Skull, and then Redneck... And then got down to, you know, the ranch for my quiet time, which is basically where you and I work our ass off because we're mowing and doing all the things that we're doing on top of the hunting and working out and drinking. It was like, man, I don't want no cameras around here. So I think it was a lost opportunity. And maybe, maybe we'll revisit that this time around during deer season because I think it'd be great. And it ain't a, I don't think it's a comedy. I mean, I just think it's it's a real show about real folks doing what they do, and that's what we do when we go, when we go down there. Dude, it's more real than, than well, 
Don't 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 name any shows. This this is as no, real no, than about anything right. out there. It, yeah, it's more real than anything out there because I mean the stuff we do out there at the ranch. Uh, you know, I mean that's 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 life. I mean that's that's the life that we that we see. That's the life that we choose. Um, you know, there's nothing nothing forced. There's nothing staged. I mean, if there was a camera running on the shit that you and I do, you know, whether it's work or working out or, you know, cutting up or drinking or doing any of that bullshit. Now, that's, that's real life stuff. That's stuff that people can relate to. You know, I, you know, we talk, man. I sit here and watch TV and I give you the 411 on all those shows that I watch. And it's not natural. It's not free-flowing. I, I, it is what it is, but anyway. So th- this yeah. was this wasn't a pitch, but th- that was a, that was an answer to one of the questions that I was going to answer on the next oh. podcast. But anyway, hey Teddy, it's uh eight forty four p.m. over here. I'm finishing up my second Broken Skull Ranch Margarita. This was going to be a cold beer conversation. I couldn't find any Broken Skull IPA. I know you got a Jack and Coke working over there. And you're two hours ahead of me, so it's 1044 your time. So I need yes, to let sir. you go to sleep and uh, go about paying the bills tomorrow because I know you're working on a job. Yes, sir. Yeah, man, I had my last Broken Skull IPA this evening, in fact. I saved that son of a bitch until after my birthday. I was actually going to have it on my birthday, but I went after dinner with those guys. Had it tonight, man, it's a dude, real deal, man. Quality beer. Hey, and dude, and, and here, here's the thing. Here's the thing, and this this ain't a plug for the beer, but uh, I got a uh, a tweet today from someone talking about how expensive the beer was on InsideTheCellar.com. Oh. No, you know, here, but here's the thing. Here's the real deal, because you bought some, and when I came yeah. down to visit you, uh, uh, shit, a couple of months ago, I brought you a case of beer because I know you were ordering it from Inside the yep. Cellar. But here's the thing. We yep. don't have distribution in Texas. So what InsideTheCellar.com does is purchase the beer from El Segundo Brewing Company, and then they got to add you know, their cheese on top of it so they make something from selling it, and then they have to ship it. So, yeah, I think the beer is available in almost 35 states. And, yeah, to, to most people's point on Twitter, it is higher than Giraffe Pussy, but – any beer that you get off there is damn near in the same category. We're working on Texas distribution, but until we get that, you know, the, the price of the beer is the price of the beer, and then they got to make their money. So you're, you're paying, you got to pay the middleman to get the shit to you. And so if you're in LA and you stop by the brewery, you know, this shit's just, just normal as fuck. But when you got to start shipping to somewhere and the other guy's got to make their money, you know, that's just the business aspect of it. So, well, hopefully that that problem will get solved when we get down here in Texas and get to some other states. But anyway, the beer's flying off the racks. wasn't a plug. Let's move on down the road. Teddy, it's good talking to you. Dude, you know what? You can go to a restaurant and get a three dollar hamburger. You can get a fifteen dollar steak. You know what I mean? If you're if you're squawking about the beer, dude, it's a solid beer and it's worth paying for. And we'll end on that that's, note. That's my take. <laughs> Teddy, good talking to you. All right, Steve. All right, everybody, give me to go home. Q's time to wrap up his podcast and ride off in the sunset. Before I do, I'm going to give you something to watch. I tell you what, while I was uh, doing my recovery period, I had a lot of time on my hands. So I watched that movie called The Revenant. I watched Straight Out of Compton, and I watched Eagles, The History of the Eagles, one of my favorite bands of all time. So my recommended view, and I'm going to come back and do a, a review on Revenant and Straight Out of Compton. But my recommended viewing for you, if you have about three hours and six minutes and you are a fan of the Eagles, then watch The History of the Eagles, and you can find that on Netflix. And one of the things, and if any of you boys out there that are in the wrestling business are listening to this, one of the reasons I highly recommend this is because the Eagles were a phenomenal band. But this uh, documentary was probably one of the best I've ever seen with the research and the guys all participating in the interviews and just some of the stories they tell. These guys are, the music business is just like the wrestling business. Some of the stories these guys tell and the way that they tell them, like Glenn Fry when he's telling how life in the fast lane came about and just so many life lessons and uh, some of the old uh, musical acts that they paired with and traveled with, it turned me on to a whole, uh, you know, 
bunch of new musicians that I used to listen to back in the day, but refreshed them in my memory. So I've gone back and listened to so many more people. But there's so many lessons and stories in this documentary. I would recommend it to all the boys and, and all the all the gals down there at the NXT Performance Center because it's all about storytelling. Listen to Joe Walsh tell some of his stories. Listen to Don Henley weathering the storms on the road, all the politics, all the headaches, hassles, and horseshit within the structure of that band. It was an incredible documentary, and I really enjoyed that. But anyway, uh, on to something new. I've got all these new T-shirt designs at ProWrestlingTees.com slash Steve Austin. Or, man, you can go straight to BrokenSkullRanch.com, my website, rebuilt by Brian Bentley, and find everything that's Steve Austin related right there. But all them damn T-shirts you saw me wear on Broken Skull Challenge, Redneck Island, are at BrokenSkullRanch.com. And speaking of BrokenSkullRanch.com, you can also find Broken Skull IPA from El Segundo Brewing Company, and you can click on the link there, and it'll take you to InsideTheCellar.com, and they'll ship it to wherever you are if your state allows. The Broken Skull IPA has taken the United States by storm. We're having a hard time keeping up and meeting demand. That's how in demand this beer is. And because we don't have national distribution, InsideTheCellar.com has to add a little on top so that they make their money. So, uh, yeah, sometimes it, it's higher than giraffe pussy, but it's worth it, and that's the bottom line. If you come through California and LAX, hang a left and go by the brewery and get some on draft for a regular price. It's the best IPA in the United States of America, and you can take that to the bank, and that's the bottom line. If you in California, go down to Whole Foods or Total Wine, and you can buy it right there. Quick shout-out the Steve Austin Broken Skull Knife. From Cold Steel Knives is just selling like hotcakes off a damn shelf. I'm fixing to tweet out a picture on my Twitter account and on my Instagram account, Steve Austin BSR of the new catalog. Uh, the knife is now retailing at $111. That's a substantial savings at what it was initially offered at. This is a badass blade. It's the same blade I was talking about in my story with Teddy trying to peel these band aids off my shoulder. And you can find that Cold Steel link at BrokenSkullRanch.com. It's a badass knife that I'm very proud of. And I'll tell you what I'm also proud of. I'm proud of the fact that you guys have been supporting the sponsors of the Steve Austin Podcast because if I didn't have these sponsors, I wouldn't have a podcast. These folks are the ones that let me do this for you free for twice a week. So I want to say big thanks to DDPYoga.com slash Austin and the DDP Yoga Now app and the True Car. And I also want to thank Amazon because they've been around since day one. And if you use my Amazon links whenever you do any online shopping, Amazon will kick back a few bucks to the show just to help us pay our production cost. They do not charge you anything extra. It's just a deal that we've worked out with them like many businesses have. They chip back a cunt here so we can pay our people at production to keep this show on the air twice a week for free. Here's how you help support using Amazon. Go to podcastone.com. Click on the Killer Deals button in the top right corner of the page, and then hit the Steve Austin Show button. You'll see my Amazon links there for USA, UK, and Canada. All my sponsors are there. They kick back a cunt hair just to keep the production cost on the show down, and we're able to deliver to the show for free, forever, two times a week. No hidden charges. Hey, bookmark a son of a bitch, and you can find it a hell of a lot easier than fiddle-fucking around by jumping through all these damn hoops, bells and whistles and bullshit. But anyway... Folks, I want to thank my buddy, Ted Fowler. On Twitter, he's Ted Fowler 361 On Instagram, he's Ted Fowler 361 uh, Good talking to you, Ted. He's keeping it real down there in Rockport, Texas. And, hey, keep listening, folks. The 60-second AP News headlines are coming up next. Until next time, my name is Steve Austin, and I will catch your ass down the road. Download new episodes of Steve Austin Unleashed every Thursday at PodcastOne.com. That's PodcastONE.com. Stay tuned for the latest AP News headlines from Podcast One right after this. When shopping for car insurance, consider this. GEICO has been saving people money on car insurance for over 75 years. So if you're serious about savings, it's simple. Go to GEICO.com. After 75 years, they know how to save you money. AP Update, I'm Ross Smithson. Adam Schiff, the ranking Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, says U.S. officials are talking to French intelligence personnel 
as they try to determine what caused a Paris to Cairo flight to fall out of the sky over the Mediterranean. Is there any information that we have that would shed light on any of the passengers? Uh, but there's nothing uh, yet to confirm um, uh, the cause of the plane crash. FBI Director James Comey says intelligence agents from around the world, including some of his, are collaborating on possible causes of the Egypt air crash. So far, at least, we have no claim of responsibility or evidence that this was an intentional act, but the FBI, as you would expect, is working with our partners around the world to try and gain a better understanding of what happened, it's given that we don't see any indication yet. None of the 66 people on board, American. AP Update, I'm Ross Simpson.